The 6.5 is on the road in New York City here for Cloudera's Evolve 2023 event. We are talking some of our favorite topics here. You know, you had to guess it was generative AI, but a lot of discussions here, Dan, I mean, and quite frankly, they're not necessarily new discussions that to make any type of analytics or machine learning or generative AI work, you have to have your data in order. Yeah, you really do. And we love the new tools. Everybody loves the icing, the cherry. It's the Sunday. But you know, all that stuff that goes in, you know, yeah. you need the ice cream, you know, you need all the stuff that goes in the middle to make it good. They're starting to get hungry this here. I'm, I'm, yeah, this, this is good. Time. Thank you. I mean, I'm here for you, but it doesn't happen yeah. without all of it. And there's a lot of that here. You sometimes hear things like picks and axes or picks and shovels. Today's been a lot about how we get that prepared so that we can build these generative apps that really enable businesses to be more productive, more efficient, and of course, driving futuristic CX. One of the bigger conversations we're having is, well, wait a second, uh, if 75 to 9 percent of the data is still uh, on-prem enterprise data, how are we going to activate generative AI uh, out there? And there's no better person, I think, than uh, Cloudera's David Dickman. Great to see you. Great to see you guys again. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Yeah, we no, no need to say uh, welcome first timer. Gosh, <laughs> you've been on a bunch. Yeah, no, it's been a few, yeah. And uh, your episodes always do great, and we're looking forward to this conversation of essentially uh, activating your, your on-prem data for generative AI, so thank you. No, my pleasure. Yeah. Well, let's start there. You know, we we love to opine. We like to tell stories and, 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 and tales about what the future might look like. And sometimes we let our guests do that, don't we? But most of the time. <laughs> we try to. We try. We try. So, yeah. you know, kind of uh, one of my favorite Stephen Covey lines from The Seven Habits uh, was something like, you begin with the end in mind. So let's begin, David, with the end in mind here and say, what do you think this wave, this next wave of generative AI is going to look like? Sure. So, you know, when we think about generative AI, especially when we think where some of our customers have already put generative AI into productive services today, a lot of it's based on general data that is, uh, and, and general models found uh, in the cloud, a lot of the safe data, the data that pretty much doesn't expose us or reveal us or put us in any form of risk. And that's great. You've got these conversational chat bots. We've got these content generators we're seeing used in marketing, video creation, photo creation, flyer creation. And even in health sciences, we see a lot of predictive medicine going on. But the next wave of generative AI moves us from this conversational experience to something more of a concierge experience where we reveal our private personal information into the generative AI in exchange for a higher value service. So being able to do things like have a detailed conversation with a particular customer and get them into something like a next best offer. So here's something I've offered you and you personally would like this offer next. And I might not offer this to anyone else, very unique. Or in the health sciences field where I can take the collective understanding and intelligence of all the medical science and apply it perhaps to the most remote locations and treat that specific injury or that specific medical condition knowing the current facilities available and the collective consciousness of all the medical science. And in order to do that, we have to give up what I like to call the concierge effect. I have to give up a little bit of my personal identity in a trusted relationship with a service provider to get that high value service back. So next wave generative AI is going to provide very personalized, very tailor fit, high value to the business and to the business's customers and patients. So is this domain specific? Uh, I mean, at least the, the POCs that I'm seeing that are at least external are very domain specific. But it seems to me though, that what the future holds is crossing the lines, let's say between ERP and, and CX, maybe hitting proprietary product data. There's some companies that even talked about legal data that, that, that were internalized. What, what's the state uh, of that? Well, absolutely. So again, today's generative AI, we have a lot of guardrails in place because we're still getting that, that you know, the, the, the perceived overall value versus the perceived risk. When the value is greater than the risk, we'll take yeah. the leap. And so today we're putting those guardrails on to constrain that risk and domain specific is a good way to go. When we think of like autonomous vehicles, if you're driving on a closed track, you reduce dramatically the number of parameters that that autonomous vehicle has to take into account versus cars, the, the, the driverless taxis out on the street. So the more domain specific right. constraint we can be, the happier we are, mm -hmm. but we also lose that 
precise value, that differentiated value. Imagine being able to deliver your customers a much more tailor-fit experience. Amazon's a great example. When you go to Amazon, you get those predictions, right? Yeah, it's sure. like this, people who bought these things probably like those, but I like to think for a second, how many false positives do you still get on that? Right. Quite a few still. Now that doesn't mean that they're not decent recommendations for people like me with a similar shopping habit. But imagine instead of going to amazon.com, I go to dave.amazon.com, where only what I want is ever presented to me. It's already figured out who I am. Right. I've given up a lot more information about myself to this environment, and they've learned from everyone else what I would let, like. Let me double click on that though, because yeah. it's a fascinating thought. Right. But I would also say, AI, as we know it, the pre-generative AI, has actually been doing this to some extent, right? For sure. When you turn on Netflix, you get a pretty good set of things that you're most likely to want to watch based Absolutely. on behavior. When you go to Amazon, you're getting, a, like, filter, filtration recommender engines mm -hmm. are pretty good. So just for the, you know, do it for, do it for the audience, and I'll yeah. pretend like I already know the answer, <laughs> but, like, what's the difference? Meaning with generative, how is this actually making that better? Because I think people have actually come really accustomed to like would you even shot like like Twitter like everything like I expect my feed to be tailored to me absolutely so what does generative change so it does a couple of things the first thing it does is and for, for analytical AI a lot of what we're talking about with our customers were enterprise AI yep. being able to make those predictions we've gotten pretty good at that but imagine that we can take the prediction and go to the next level so one of our customers is listening to the sounds that turbines make to determine when the pitches change when a turbine is ready for service so you get the signal, right. this one's ready for service, now what? What do I do about that? Now imagine I include my financial data. I include, include all of the historical records about not just this piece of equipment, but the maintenance records of all the equipment. I even include some uh, material sciences in there to determine the, the, the wear and tear on the metals and other materials. And then I make a recommendation. Given this piece of equipment's current state and our known idea, we recommend replacement versus repair at this point. And I can go a step further. Generative AI can also then order the work team, order the part, prepare the materials, schedule everything to be done. So all you have to do is show up at work and say, I am going to replace your turbine tomorrow because I've figured it all out. So we're adding additional value by putting things like sensitive financial information into the equation, deep histories of unstructured data. And here's the other piece of the puzzle. That's gold in those hills, that unstructured data. Yep. But the mining tool to get that out used to be a thousand people taking a thousand years to figure it all out, looking at x-rays, blueprints, right. handwritten documents, stuff that's really hard to, to decipher meaning from. Gen AI can be trained on that, and that becomes yet another input to Gen AI as well. So now we have better mining equipment to turn the hardest to get at gold into valuable business data, and that gives us even deeper insight. So what we're getting today is things that are pretty good, mm -hmm. right? You're getting those nice recommendations, but imagine instead of Netflix saying, here's some movies you might like, before you even get home, it's queued up the movie you would want to watch and you didn't even know it yet. So being able to be more prescriptive, more, recommend, more recommendations, and even more automatic actions all come from generative AI. So we're progressing as an industry. We've gone from uh, data is the new oil to data is the new gold. Uh, I, I caught that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Can we electrify uh, it? Exactly. Data? There we go. Absolutely. And, and, and we saw, you know, we talked about some examples uh, about a big retailer, but but also, which I think uh, enterprises have those question of is, hey, if all this data that I have, I'm a manufacturer, I'm an energy company, I'm a pharmaceutical company, I'm a financial institution. Yeah. What do I have to do to take advantage of it? I mean, quite frankly, uh, we're not gonna take data that we haven't uploaded into the cloud in 15 years and auto magically start doing it. Oh, by the way, commingling all that data. Right. Or, or it, it's just not gonna happen, okay? Right. So how do they take advantage of it? So what we've seen is, and we'll use the gold analogy, we think of things like lake houses. What a lake house is, not just a better way to organize and store structured and unstructured data together, that was its original premise, but it's also a set of services that sit on top of that to do the data preparation, to do the data warehousing analytics, to do data flow and streaming for real-time capture, to do ML on that data. And the data lake houses have been born in cloud on cloud data. Right. So the problem is that on-premises data, not only is it big and deep histories, we have one company right. we're working with that has 150 years of financial records, they have financial records that predate computers. They've digitized this, 
but getting meaning from it right. is an unstructured data problem. So the first thing you have to do is bring lake house technology and apply it on-prem, because exactly to your point, I want that trust mm -hmm. on that data. I don't want to whisper my secrets to the public, so I'm going to bring the technology we're already using in public cloud to mine the best gold out of the data that's born there right. and bring it into the enclosure of on-premises and do the mining there as well. But we recognize that that data and the cloud data and the systems in ML that, that, that serves them both, the Gen AI that'll serve them both, needs to come together. So if we can extend right. that bubble of trust into a hybrid environment that covers every cloud, we can now have that on-premises data be mined appropriately to participate and give us that rich personal context. So what's in there? That's my customers, my co patients, PII, HIPAA data, my trade secrets, my right. blueprints, stuff that I want to keep safe and secure. I want to use it, I'm scared to use it, but if I can create a trust bubble around all of that, I'll be glad to use it and get us to those much right. more high valuable generative AI it's applications. Sort of a parallel use case to, you know, how certain workloads, you know, whether that's been confidential computing, mm -hmm. you know, of course we know Nitro, Enclaves, and what I'm saying is in the Gen AI era, there's a on-prem to cloud sort of trust, uh, and I'll use Vector yeah. as a great example, and also Vector databases, because it's put Absolutely. together and creates a lot of opportunity, but there's Hard this address. trust that needs to be created and why a lot of things stay on-prem, why most of the data is still on-prem. So we've spent a lot of time talking about what could happen and how it can work, and even why you might want to do it, but let's talk about one more thing before we let you go, and by the way, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, how, did, how are you talking to customers about getting this in motion? I mean, I think we have a lot of sort of stuckness. Is that a word? Stuckness in terms of companies are like, yeah, we, you know, we want to do this and we're using enterprise search on, on, on Google Cloud or we're, we, you know, we're playing with uh, Bedrock, but really getting going. Well, absolutely, and I think that the analogy used at the very beginning um, with, with Stephen Covey saying, you know, start with the end and bring it back to the beginning. If you have a vision in mind, and knowing that getting to high value next wave generative AI is going to be an iterative process, and we were talking a little, little bit earlier about the crawl, walk, run, and you've got to scuff your knees a little bit before you can really make it go. But knowing where this is going to apply business value, understanding how this can work when you train it on your most sensitive data, to understand that that, that is going to pay massive dividends, get that value system higher than the perceived risk, we can then encourage customers to take some of those first steps, like bringing in the chatbot. OCBC Singapore is using Cloudera already to do things like chatbot to reduce pressure on customer service and support organizations. They're using the code generator to improve R&D uh, uh, behavior, and they've already started using Gen AI specifically for a next best offer program that's already netted them two times uh, conversion rate on prospects. So they're already getting small bites that have big impact on their business, and now the next step is to continue to feed and grow and trust that data to feed and grow these into the next wave, knowing where ultimately that's going to take you. So start at the end, work to the beginning, and take those first baby steps that immediately pay you back as you move towards the, the, the future that you want. Well, David, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Always appreciate you coming on. I'm sure this isn't the last time. Absolutely. But uh, best to you. Congratulations on a great Evolve event. Thank you. And we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Tune into all the episodes of Cloudera Evolve 2023 here in New York City for the 6.5 on the road. Hit that subscribe button. Be part of our community, we appreciate it. But for this episode, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, we're signing off, see you soon.